Hi, uh, good evening. I'm Charles Archer. Today we're here at the Soul Restaurant in uh, the Soho area of New York City speaking about the sustainable constitutional Egypt. Most recently, Egypt uh, drafted a new constitution that has really caused a lot of controversy and a lot of excitement around the possibility for Egypt. Today, there are a number of different panelists speaking about the, the good, the bad, the indifference, and the possibility and opportunity for Egypt. Egypt. We have speakers on human rights, we have speakers on just the overall constitution and the personal freedoms, and myself who spoke about the unity of the new Egypt and you who have to participate in order to have a sustainable government. I'm participating today in this discussion because I, as you, believe that in periods of transition, everybody is required for everything. At the heart of that movement is the notion that when everybody paddles at the same time, in the same direction, towards the same goal, great things can be accomplished. It seems to me that there are several key concerns to be addressed with a new constitution for Egypt. One, of course, has to be how this addresses the issues of security for Egypt and the security of the Egyptian people. The second, I believe, is how it addresses the powers of government, and by that I mean how it recognized that the powers of the government are limited to those granted by the people who are governed. The new constitution does not grant power to the people, but it rather recognizes the power of the people. As a black American, as a black American of Caribbean descent, I am always amazed at how the American constitution and American laws keep changing. I'll bet some time too slowly to achieve what our founding fathers envisioned as a more perfect union. Since its inception, the American Constitution recognized that it was a starting place to a way to govern the people, which was always subject to the consent of the people who are being governed. I know that the task before the people of Egypt may seem to be a daunting one, but we have the benefit of recent history to show us that the effort is worthwhile if we keep our eyes on the prize. From Gandhi to Dr. King, and to most recently Nelson Mandela, we have had the lessons of others to show us that change is possible, and that governments that are more inclusive and are designed to respect all individuals actually do make a difference. In the case of Egypt, there is so much reason for optimism. Not only was Egypt at the forefront of so many advances in civilization and human interactions, but its long history of diversity and multiculturalism bodes well for a government in modern times. I think it's important that everybody keeps their eye on one common goal. In order to achieve a sustainable constitutional Egypt, it requires that people know their constitution, respectfully participate in political discussions, and start to build, and start to build a stronger Egypt. In my most recent book, Everybody Paddles, A Guide to Building Company Consensus, I outline six principles which I actually offer to you for your own consideration. We need a unity, we need unity under one umbrella. Obviously, in order to get the Constitution passed, it's going to require the unification of people understanding what is at stake and what can be possible. It also will require that leaders understand that the role of the success of this Constitution depends on the people, not just the leaders. Effective communication, getting the word out, making sure people are fully aware. When thinking about the problems, as was mentioned earlier, the U.S. Constitution has its own issues, or constitutions around the world have their own issues, but when we concentrate on a problem, we don't go anywhere. So I suggest that you concentrate only on a solution on how you move your agenda forward. Everybody requires special attention. One thing I noticed with my review of the, the draft uh, constitution is that it really does talk about personal freedoms. And that is actually important to a number of different people and a, a number of different reasons. So if everybody requires special attention, then those freedoms will actually be realized. And then lastly, the power of belief. Yet all of these principles are relevant and applicable. However, in this moment, I believe that the power of belief is what is necessary. Constitutional issues are of intergenerational importance. Previous generations have the institutional knowledge and the experience that is required. However, the current and the next generations must carry the torch towards sustainability. 
without both, and more importantly, without the youth and young adult participation, Egypt and other countries alike will do themselves an injustice and a disservice in order not to form a more perfect or more democratic system. Across the globe, we have, we have and are witnessing the energetic focus and behavior of young influencers of government that make an impact and make a difference in our society. And then I'll bring attention to one thing in particular. Most recently, uh, or most recognizably, there was thousands of people who congregated in Tahari Square after a Facebook post. Obviously, people want change. People want different. People want influence. However, to exclude the younger generation is really to, to exclude the possibility and the future of Egypt. We must remain excited about our possibility our opportunity and the difference that we can make. In closing, I'll tell you, everybody matters, so everybody must participate in order to have a more sustainable constitutional Egypt. I applaud you for your leadership, and I wish everyone success in achieving the goals of a, a more approved constitution. Thank you.